Okay, hi Anna. Um, my name is Jojo. I'm 49 years old and I'm living in Somerset. Um, I'm really tired today because I was up at 4am this morning. Um, I couldn't sleep because um, I'm scared to go to the shops to get some food. Um, and that's purely because I, um, I choose not to wear a mask. Um, and thanks to the outrageous statement by Cressida Dick, um, that's given the green light for anybody to abuse me, uh, shout at me, which has already happened once. Um, and I'm not ashamed, and, and she said shame me, but it's just abuse, it's, that's as simple as that. Um, how have we been coping? Well, me personally, um, it feels like grief. I've been in a state of shock and disbelief at times. Um, then I've got depressed, I got angry, I've cried a lot and it, it's, it seems to be that like I'm grieving for the fact that we are being led into a future that I don't want to be part of. Um, the main point for me recording this, and I could talk more about the mask because it's seriously the symbolism of being muzzled and prevented from breathing and speaking is so, so dystopian and so dark and sinister as many other people who've done these have said. But I want to tell you uh, about our experience with them shutting the hospitals because my partner has spondylitis of the spine which is an arthritis and a couple of months ago he started getting pain in one of his eyes he lost his vision in it um, what happens is the arthritis causes the um, iris to fuse to the lens so he's unable to process light coming into that eye very very painful um, we were told in no uncertain terms that um, he couldn't go to the hospital the thing is with the treatment of iritis is that it needs to be prompt. It's it's completely, completely treatable, very simple to treat, but it must be done promptly. So after four days of him being in terrible pain uh, and being denied access to any medical treatment for it, um, we managed to get the doctor to speak to the hospital and uh, they he at least got some drops which eased the pain, didn't didn't actually address the problem itself so we are six ish, six ish weeks on and he's uh, we went to the Royal Bath Hospital uh, it was completely empty um, and has apparently been empty since March um, so I don't know about uh, protect the NHS I, I think that's a joke what's actually happened is the NHS is shut um, so if it, it, it's shut and you're, we are allegedly protecting the NHS at the cost of anyone who has anything that needs treating, anyone that's paid into the NHS for their entire lives and now actually needs some medical help for something. It's um, you're protecting the NHS at the cost of people with serious illnesses, the elderly who need more treatment. Um, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, the NHS is shut. So he had an appointment uh, and whilst walking to the eye department, walked past six wards, all empty, uh, the lights were off, completely not, uh, not in use, um, so no overflowing beds of uh, dreadfully ill COVID patients. And um, he was told it's too late to treat his eye um, and to add insult to injury, the only option now for him to save his vision is to have an operation. but. Um, yeah, you guessed it. They've cancelled all the operations, so not even a waiting list. So still denial of any medical treatment. So that's where we're at with this. And um, I'm extremely angry. I know this isn't right. None of this is right. Um, I'm very upset for him and we, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. But it made me think of all those people that have been denied treatment and really what's going on. And as far as I am concerned, I believe that this is um, 
a silent genocide, a genocide by stealth. And the last couple of days, it's reminded me of um, a poem by um, a German Lutheran pastor. And I'm sorry, I'm looking down to make sure I get that right. About how the Nazis targeted and purged certain groups in um, Nazi Germany. And I've changed the words slightly, but for me, this is exactly how I feel. So here goes. First they came for the elderly, and I was not elderly, and so I said nothing. And then they came for the seriously ill, and I wasn't seriously ill, and I said nothing. And then they came for those with disabilities, and I had no disability, so I said nothing. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Thank you for all you're doing, Anna. Um, the videos are great. Um, I find highly emotional, but absolutely necessary at this time. And um, thank you for listening.